I cut down this big white fur a couple weeks ago. Speaking of that, let's watch that again. That never gets old. I cut this down for my dad. He wants to put it on his Woodmiser LT10 sawmill. But I see a potential problem with that. 48 inches. 20 inches. 48 inches. 20 inches. 48. Carry the four. I don't think this log is going to fit on that mill. I think we have a problem here. But when it comes to working in the woods, it seems like there's always problems. But problems aren't problems if you can come up with a solution. And I think I have one. This would be a good opportunity to test the steel ripping chain I got. We'll see how that rips compared to my usual square ground. The ripping chain is full comp, round filed, versus my skip tooth square ground I usually use. I'm going to compare two new chains fresh out of the box, factory edge. Yeah, I know, you can get it sharper than factory edge with your file. We all can. But we're going to do it this way. If the edge is really bad, I'll touch them up with a file. First, I'm going to bucket with the chain I already have on here. My first idea was to rip the first log before I buck it off. Because if I cut this round log off on this slope, there's a good chance it's going to roll down, land in the creek. I don't want this log down in the creek. I want the log up here. But it has this crack in it. I'd like to cut it parallel to the longest crack. Instead of trying to cut a straight line this way, I'd rather cut from the top. Oh yeah, I might have forgot to mention, we're going to quarter this thing. Little important detail I might have left out. I decided to cut the log off so I can orient it to where this crack is vertical. If I put this block in here, what are the chances it will roll down just enough to make that crack vertical and not jump over that and go down and land in the drink? Moderate to decent, maybe? <laughs> Almost lost it. It almost went over. I think I need a log right PV or an Andy from Southern Adirondack Outdoors. He could probably move this with no problem. This log's too big to get a good grip on it. it just rips the bark out. Typically, you don't want to be on the downhill side of a log. I'm not going to get below this one, but this one is firmly anchored up against these trees. That puts that crack vertical. Same on the top end. Crack is vertical. Going to start out with a new square ground chain. I'm not going to time this one. I'm just going to test user experience and see which one makes the better cut, which one is more smooth. First, I'll make myself a guideline. Uh -huh. 
that's about halfway through. That cut really nice. It was a little bit slow because I didn't file the rakers down at all. I want to try it out with factory settings. One of the reasons I put a factory chain on is because my other chain, I have the rakers down pretty aggressive. On a long rip like that, I think it's better having them a little less aggressive. Let's put the ripping chain on, cut the rest of it with that. Got the ripping chain on. Let's see if there's any kind of noticeable difference. Now the next problem, since the bar isn't long enough to go all the way through, we have a little bit of a situation. Need to cut from the other side, but the other side's on the ground. What if I put a little bit of an extra insurance policy on this side, then very carefully, without having this thing roll down into the creek and without dying. That's an important part of working in the woods, is to do things without dying. Making sure we stay on this side of this path. We don't want to get downhill from this. You're in a little bit of a bad spot there. You might want to move up a little bit. Get this to roll 90 degrees. Now it doesn't even want to roll. With that cut horizontal, I can do a perpendicular one. I think it's easier for me to go straight if I know I'm going straight up and down than if I'm going at an angle. I didn't notice a huge difference between chains, but I think this one was a little bit faster. I'll do this cut with the ripping chain, then probably do the next one with the square ground. After getting a little bit used to this one, I'll see how the other one feels. See if it's ready to come apart. This was the first cut with the square ground. Made a little directional correction there. Cut's a little bit rough. Right around here is where I switched to the ripping chain. I think it's a little bit smoother. This is the transition where I went from diagonal to the grain to parallel with the grain. Noodling, you might call it. It cut really smooth there. This cut was all done with the ripping chain. Not sure if you can tell on camera. This was square ground. This was ripping. I think the ripping is more smooth. I think it's hard to pick it up on camera, but I can feel a difference. Yeah, I can feel some difference. I'll finish this off with the ripping chain, then do the other side with the square ground. See how I like the square ground after using the ripping. What are the chances this will play nice and roll off of here? I 
I would say moderate to good. Back to the square ground. See how I like this after using the ripping chain. Key here is going to be cutting through this without getting it into the dirt. When I'm ripping with the grain, noodling as some call it, this is cutting more aggressive, but it's plugging up really fast. I've done a lot of noodling with a square ground chain, but it's particularly bad on this log. On the previous cuts, the ripping chain did really well on that. This is producing a lot of long noodles. Seemed like the ripping chain did a little better. I'm gonna put the ripping chain back on here and finish this cut, see if it does do better than this. Let's see how the ripping chain does on that last cut. It was plugging a little bit, but not as bad. Something about this log has pluggy noodles in it. The noodles aren't as long that this makes. That was a weird way to say that. The noodles the ripping chain makes are not as long as the noodles the square ground chain makes. Square ground noodles, finer ripping chain noodles. I was being a little conservative, trying not to get the tip of my saw in the dirt. Let's see if this one's ready to pop open. I wouldn't exactly call that popping open. I'm not sure if there's quite a bit of wood left or if it's just pushing up against these. It is more of a rough cut but a lot of that is likely operator influenced. I started cutting out a little too much that way and did a little bit of correcting. It's a little bit bowed this way, trying to get it lined back up with the center. A lot of that is due to me doing that more so than the performance of the chain. It's not a really good comparison because there's a lot of variables here, but my initial opinion is the ripping chain's a little bit more smooth, and I think it was cutting a little bit faster. Not a real good comparison, the skip tooth square ground versus ripping chain, which is round filed and full comp. A better test would probably be full comp round file chain versus the ripping chain. That last cut parallel to the grain, there was a big difference on how the square ground plugged up versus how the ripping chain it plugged up too, but not as bad. On the last part of that cut with the ripping chain, I was at a little bit of a different angle in relation to the grain because the handle of the saw was hitting the ground. Maybe not a fair comparison. I've done a lot of ripping firewood rounds with square ground chain. It usually doesn't plug that bad. I think that was just an extra pluggy part of that log. Might be good to have some big firewood rounds and do some comparisons on those where it's more of a controlled environment. There's more consistency of size and depth I'm cutting into. Could do some time tests on, timed tests on that. Could also get some regular, uh, regular what? Regular round ground chain. 
I think it's lunchtime. I'm losing my power of speech. Do some more comparisons with those. If there's more interest in this subject, I could go deeper into that. If you want to see more, hit the like button. If I get an unusually high percentage of likes on this video, then we can tin, tin, continue. <sighs> then we can continue the subject, go in a little deeper on it. For now, I'm going to leave you with another replay of cutting that tree down because it never gets old. Yeah.